Hello guys and girls and welcome to episode 37 of the VR Inside podcast. This is a weekly VR, AR and MR talk show that is live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel. You can tune into the show live at the new times of 7pm in Europe. a review there, that would help us out very much, so please go ahead and do that. If you've got any questions, comments or feedback during the show, please put them in the chat. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can. So if you're new to the show, let me introduce you to the team. So this guy, this week, he was sent on a secret mission to infiltrate the machines to prevent Skynet from happening in the future. It is, of course, Nathie. How you doing, dude? You all right? Yes, I'm, I'm doing all righty tidy. I have been fighting against the machines once again. Mm. You know, the, the Terminators are coming. Beware, everyone. <laughs> Were you successful in your mission? <laughs> I, 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 I dressed up as a Terminator myself and uh, I, I got very deep into the rabbit hole. So, yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm still like uh, trying to figure out what they are like planning, you know? Good, good. Well, let us keep us updated on how you get on with that, dude. I would be interested to know. Sure. So uh, you've got to be careful with this next guy because uh, he likes to use pincers on people's balls. (laughs) 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 This is Corpus, our rowdy guy. How you doing, dude? You all right? Yeah, I'm I'm all right. You know, I've I've been I've been practicing with indeed some pinchers uh, over the weekend uh, it's been uh, it's been good fun it's been a lot of a uh, lot of fun it's been uh, painful mostly painful <laughs> but yeah I'm, I'm all right I, i've had a i've had a good week yeah good, good good so next up this guy after putting his mind body and soul on the line for science last week it appears our resident vr twitch streamer has some back trouble so you know, if you could please put your prayers in emoji form in the chat, every prayer will give uh, him a little HP boost. So please show him some love. It is our resident Twitch streamer, of course, in Top Five. How you doing, dude? You're like right. Broke back mountain intro, Mike. It, it's a pelvis problem, <laughs> technically, that I've got. Okay, uh, it's from you know, too place. much uh, interaction with my chat. Yeah, yeah. But are you on the mend? Like I know that you haven't been streaming much because you've been in pain, right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's yeah, it's been it's it's been hard actually. The last kind of seven days have just been like a little elf has been jumping up and stabbing me with a knife in my arse, like you know, constantly. So <laughs> that's been really right. draining and stuff. So I haven't been able to put the show on until uh, just yesterday. Actually, did kind of the first runs and so done two streams and I managed them. But it, yeah, I'm not perfect yet. I'm getting physio help, but. Uh, Otherwise, Maybe. okay. You know, it, it's given me a good excuse to play a lot with the Go, so I'll be reporting back on that. <laughs> Great excuse. Great excuse. So like I said, send your little prayers in emoji form in the chat, and uh, Zim will just heal magically throughout the show. Uh, last but by no means least, myself, Mike, the host of the show from Virtual Reality Oasis. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about Boss Key Studios' unannounced VR titles. These are the cool games that you'll probably never get to play. Uh, we're going to be talking about the VR League Season 2. Do you have what it takes to be a future VR esports star? Uh, the Pimax 8K, we've got some updates there. Will we be experiencing the super wide field of view of the Pimax anytime soon? Well, we'll soon find out. And finally, the Google Plastic. Will this be the next Google Cardboard? Stay tuned to find out. <laughs> so let's start this show off with finding out what we've been up to this week in the metaverse. And let's start it off with ZimTalk5 because you've been playing with your Oculus Go because you've been mm. sort of out of commission. So what have you been playing on your uh, your Go, dude? Yeah, uh, so the Go, first I'll just say it again, Go's great. I love the Go. Uh, and I, I kind of wish the Go, although someone just told me a great hack to connect it to the PC, I would say, you know, the fact that it doesn't like come back to base camp and, and tether to a PC, I wish it did because the screen is so fucking good. I yeah. love the lenses on it. You know, it like takes the God rays. I don't know about you guys, no God rays. And just like, it's amazing. So with that, um, I've been playing the one, the, there's one title I wanted to call out, which is kind of like, I equate it to Super Meat Boy in first person with mm. your face. So wow. uh, it's okay. a roguelike game called Vulcan. It's very, it looks a lot like Firewatch in terms of its look and feel, like the aesthetic is very cartoony and it's procedural mm-hmm. generation. And essentially what you're doing, uh, it is head motion tracking. So you're moving from platform to platform with your head and pressing a button to jump. The idea okay. is don't miss a jump. 
and so you just have to keep going. But as you're going, things are happening, like saw blades are dropping in front of you, crevasses are opening up, you know, stuff gets in your way. So it's like you're trying to go as long as possible. I've gone as far as 53 meters in the game. That's as far as I could go in like half an hour playing it. And the longest, <laughs> someone's gone a thousand meters. How they've gone that long without wow. fecking up, I, I don't know. But that game is worth a look. Uh, I don't think it's very much money, um, but that one has really stood out to me. And then I've played a few other things, and I just mentioned on Rift, the one that I think everyone, you, you guys need to check out if you haven't played this. Um, I, the, the, the list of the credits went on for about six minutes. Like, that's how many people were involved in this production. It's a, it's a, it's a 360, uh, also stereo depth um, art piece video called Alteration. And it's about, uh, it's very much like... Um, um, the Spotless Mind, uh, the movie, uh, something, something, the Spotless Mind, where there's a guy who goes in, he's trying to generate a bit, bit of extra cash, so he goes into a science experiment, and they introduce an AI into his brain, and that AI kind of fecks him up, and it's an amazing, it's just like, I won't say it's an acid trip, it's like some weird sci-fi screw fest, it is just a really weird but very well done art piece and I it like sonar when I suggested sonar you've got to you got to try that so for rift yeah. I'd say alteration and for go Vulcan is, is is very good and I think the movie you were referring to was eternal sunshine of, of the, the spotless, spotless mind. mind I can't even yeah. it's my favorite film of all time and I can't even yeah. remember the name it's just a, it's a, it's a tricky one it's a tricky it is, one yeah. it's a tricky one so talking about uh, Vulcan uh, you mentioned that I'd never heard of that game before but it sounds really cool like uh, did you suffer from any sort of motion sickness because it sounds kind of an intense experience or was it okay was it really comfortable to play no I, the, there's not been a single title on the go that I've had any kind of stomach jerk at all nothing mm. uh, so far mm. yeah, so the and, ones that I've had some issues with are some yeah. of the flight sims. Um, oh, okay. I don't know why that is. Like oh, there was a World War II... Yeah. Yeah, there was a World War II flight sim. Um, I haven't tried uh, Ultra Wings with the Go yet, but they, I don't know why they they just sort of get me. They trigger me a little bit. But um, it's probably but lateral yeah, it's motion, Mike. It's probably you know mm. like the the side to side motion because sometimes mm. in the in the aerodynamic thing they like have a model whereby you will slide like that. And if you're mm. doing that in a 3D OF headset. It could definitely yeah. get you, but I, I would say it's been largely comfortable so far. I'm really surprised. The other one, just while I'm on the subject of it, it was Rush. I tried that one as well, oh. and that sort of uh, got Sky me going dive. a little bit. Yeah, uh, but it's, I suppose it's an intense yeah. game by yeah, its very nature anyway. Also, yeah. I played a game that you recommended last week, Mike, only for a short time, because I was in a grumpy mood. I didn't want to like ruin it, you know. With, but I, I played Virtual Virtual Reality, oh, and man. I agree with you that yeah. it, it's stellar. It's like triple A. It's fucking yeah, awesome. It is. Yeah, it is. It really is a great game. It really is a great game. But I'm looking forward to checking out Vulcan now you've mentioned it. So uh, let's move on to Nathy and find out what you've been playing this week, dude. Well, well, thanks for, for shooting this one off, Zim, because I wanted to talk about uh, virtual, virtual reality. Um, yeah, for me, this was definitely uh, the best game I've played on the go so far. And it's mm. been around for like a year because you can also play it on the Google Daydream. And you can also uh, uh, just slide in one of your phones, as far as I know, and use it that way. But um, yeah, so basically, this game is about you working in VR. Okay, so <laughs> there is like apparently there is a facility out there that uh, uses humans. It's a bit like Job Simulator, where you work in VR for other people, um, and and you need to go on all kinds of adventures to help others out there uh, that are actual computers. So you're doing work for computers. Um, and it's such a random game because they, they use a system that is pretty much VRception where you grab a headset in the game because you're already in the game. Then they say like, hey, can you grab this headset? You put it on and then you are in another world. But in that world, you find another headset and you can go deeper and deeper and deeper. And sometimes they also pull you back to the facility where you came from in the first place so it's like like four or five headsets they just pop off you know it's like oh and then you see all the worlds again you you were in before so yeah. it's really playing with your mind and it, it, it's funny though it's a shame it like the go has no room scale you know you can't walk mm. around it has no positional tracking i was really missing that in this one when i was going into one of the worlds it was like a garden i was like oh i just want to walk around here a bit you did get the feeling of that, mm. 
But in the end, like that's something I was missing at that moment. It's like, oh, but now I want to really walk around. But for a mobile game, it's really, really good. Did you it's taste a little bit of Portal in that? Because I, in the humor, like yeah, it's definitely exactly. accounting well, and job sim. Yeah, yeah, job simulator, accounting, and and, and Portal indeed. Yeah, uh, uh, just just a, a robot trying to capture you and and try to like chase you and and, and do experiments with you. But the, the storyline is just pretty simple but it's it's fun it's interactive it's okay. yeah it, it's one of the best games i've played on a on a mobile uh, uh device and it really builds up the respect <laughs> for me uh of of what you can do with a mobile headset because yeah. there is enough out there that is like crap but this is something like this could be a pc game yeah it's oh, yeah. an yeah. actual pc game so uh, there's one thing i did notice and you guys were talking about this last time so I did notice a lot of flickering in this in this uh, mm. title because there's a lot of white, yep. and and it just at the start it flickers like crazy. And uh, one thing you can do to to like uh, kind of fight that is by uh, adjusting the brightness in the go itself. So mm. yeah, you could do that, but in the end, yeah, that is kind of like a problem. But that's what I've been playing, and it's it's fun. So you you can buy it for like. Ten bucks or something. Like yeah, there's. I think it's seven ninety nine in British pounds. And and, and Mike, is it like it's like four or five? No, like three four hours playtime. Yeah, so like I, I was testing a battery out, so I, I had like fourteen hours playtime to play <laughs> loads of different games, and uh, so I, I played it to the end, and uh, yeah, it took me probably about three hours to finish, but there is so much uh, exploration you can do and really sort of go off the yeah. track. Uh, and, uh, and and experience these other sort of crazy little yeah. worlds within worlds. Um, so it has got depth to it, but once you've completed it, I, I wouldn't say you'd go back yeah. to it, but it's definitely one of the yeah. must-have titles, I think, on the Oculus it's, Go. It's, it's very impressive, and not only uh, uh, visually, but also audio-wise. Like, the yeah. audio is very, very good. Compared to the other ones I've played so far, uh, yeah. like, I, I recorded it too, so I could listen to it. Uh, later down the road and and i noticed that there is so much more depth in the audio yeah. <laughs> compared to the other things i've played so far so yeah well done well done yeah it's an awesome nice. one indeed uh so what about you uh rowdy what you've been up to with your pickle rick t-shirt on i love that t-shirt man <laughs> <Pickle Rick. laughs> uh, the thing the thing that i would like to highlight i've played a bunch of titles this week as well but the the thing that i would like to highlight i played one suggestion by uh, by swim uh, there was VRFC, the the football simulator <laughs> game. It was hilarious. <laughs> I had so much fun in that one. I, I didn't I didn't even dare to go online because I was so terribly good. I, in the video I, that I made, I actually I, I scored a goal. I, I thought I scored a goal, and it took me like roughly twenty minutes to figure out that it was actually my own goal that I scored it. So I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually I was like cheering like yay yeah, I scored I scored, and my teammates they didn't say anything of course because I was playing against AI. But I actually scored on my own goal. It was hilarious. And I was absolutely exhausted of that because you need to run with your with your feet like this. Like you're, you're like running the entire time over the field. The only thing I didn't like is because I only have two senses for my rift. Yeah. It keeps on telling me like turn around, turn around, turn around. I don't uh, know if it also does that for the three senses. I don't know if you can set that somewhere. <laughs> but it's, it's I find it freaking annoying that I had to like press a button to like focus on the ball because that's what it does. Like it focuses on the ball. Um, but I had, a, I had a lot of fun in, in in that title. And then the one that I would like to to highlight in this episode is probably uh, Rat Matter, uh, the, the ball oh, picking yeah. game. And <laughs> I, I, did any of you guys played that one as well already? Or yeah. you haven't you haven't yep. checked it out yet? So um, I played for two minutes before the show, but that was it. Yeah, it's wow. an interesting one. Uh, so <laughs> what, what they asked was to like to show just a short portion of the game yet because they don't want to spoil too much before the, the big yep. release, which makes sense. <laughs> uh, we talked about it in the last episode as well. Yep. It's it's very, um, um, very like a slow paced narrative. Uh, I like that. I always like that kind of stuff. It's very visual, very uh, like a distinct art style that you have in there. Um, that opening, and indeed, like that lighting in the opening is like, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really I I liked it. I liked it a lot. There's like something spooky going on as yeah. well, like that is weaving in between in the story. I like that kind of stuff. I don't know how spooky it's going to get. Then I might not like that stuff anymore, since I also, <laughs> I, for your suggestion, Mike, I actually played Face uh, Face Your Fears. Oh man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did you go with that? <laughs> I actually just released my, my video on that, but uh, it was it was a funny a funny video to to watch. 
yeah. it, it was a little bit less funny. <laughs> it's really interesting like, you mentioned Face Your Fears because uh, a lot of the experiences, a lot of people have been commenting on my video saying that only two experiences actually are available for the Rift, like where there's about eight maybe for the Go oh, and the really? Gear VR. Yeah, so a lot of those experiences on mobile oh, are yes. exclusive to mobile. You don't oh, get them on the Rift. Because wow. I did the uh, I did the Stranger Things one. I oh, did right, that nice. One. Uh, I, I actually liked it so much that I started watching the series now. So it's actually kind of <laughs> funny. So developers, it works. Eh? Advertising and virtual reality. Yeah. So you'd never seen Stranger Things before? No. Oh, man, it is it. so good. I'm, I'm excited for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Rowdy, what did you think about the uh, like uh, gameplay mechanics of Red Matter and the way you move, the locomotion? Uh, they solved it in a smart way, I think. Uh, I, I don't like it that there's no complete free locomotion but they did comment on my video saying stating that they were going to release a patch very it's soon it's in already it's actually already it was in there, yesterday yeah. um, i played it that way now i don't i haven't tested it with that patch yet i don't know if it's actually hand tracked or if it's uh or if it's uh hat tracked since that hand might track. be hand. issue for it's me. hand tracked it's hand 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 hand, hand. Yeah. hand. okay that's i like that i yeah. like that yeah, but, that's um, the best, best way to go about it. It's worth mentioning now, because I was going to mention it in the small news, but like you said, they have released a patch um, prior to the release. So the release is the 24th, uh, so next Thursday. But um, yeah, they obviously they've been getting a lot of feedback from the community and people that have played the game already. Um, and yeah, the, a lot of people were asking for free locomotion, so they have updated yeah. it. And that's what I checked out just before the show, because I just wanted to compare the two locomotion methods. So mm -hmm. you kind of got like a, a teleport where you kind of you boost up into the air like a little space hop. But that makes sense, though, land. from the exactly. perspective of the game. I, I, I didn't really have that much of a problem with that yeah. as it makes sense from a narrative uh, kind of point. You know, they want to they want to like boost you up and like, oh, yeah, you also have those like weird little hand things. It all yeah. makes sense in the narrative of the game. And I, li I like yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, uh, indeed, like the, the dashing forward for the short distances. I was really a big fan of that. Yeah, like I, I tried it out and I prefer probably the original locomotion method. Like uh, the, the mm -hmm. smooth locomotion, I get it that people want it and people ask for it, but it is becoming one of those things that if people don't have it in a game, then people just use that as an excuse to hate on a game, right? Yeah. But like you say, this is kind of whole, True. the whole method is woven into the story of the game. Mm -hmm. Like that's the narrative. Um, but yeah, I prefer the original one, but the smooth locomotion is there. So at least you've got options if you want to use it, I guess. Yeah, and I'm, 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 with, I'm with you, Rowdy, on this. So um, having played this, it's really interesting. Played this in, a, in OC4, played it again now. There's almost zero differences. So what they've done, obviously, is, is focus on the later content. Um, but I'd mm -hmm. say the visuals stood out to me. Like, they were really strong. But, but yeah. similar to what you were saying, Mike, I like, I mean, I've not seen this in another game, the kind of what I call the jet jettisoned jetpack. So you can yeah. you can slow down or you can speed up your jetpack yeah. motion and that's great, it feels great. The only thing mm -hmm. that is every so often, I wanna fall backwards <laughs> when I'm doing that. Yeah. But then, I, did, yeah. I didn't really use that. I did it like a couple of times with like the speeding up and the speeding backwards. Yeah. It did add a lot of like um, tension to the game though, because for the more like scary parts, you have like a certain part where like some crates are floating around the corner yep. so i i teleported behind the corner and then you like you can't stop that as well you know yeah. you just go and i was like what am i going to see there what am i going to see there what am i going to see there what am i going to there's nothing there okay good 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 next part that's, what am i going to see a really what good am point I you mentioned about the fact that it's tension yeah because it, because yeah, uh you're you're, you're fixed, fixed on it once you pick your teleport point you're on yeah, that you track there yeah mm. And it's interesting because like uh, it kind of brings me on to a nice segue of what I played this week because I played uh, Daedalus, which is made by the yeah. same studio, yeah. uh, Vertical Robot, right? So Daedalus is a Gear VR title, but they've got this awesome sort of uh, locomotion mechanic in a game where you do kind of bounce and you kind of you sort of jump and glide. So it's almost like a very similar locomotion mechanic that they've oh. used in Red Matter as well. Because on mm. Daedalus, you basically use the button to use your power to jump. And then when you're in the air, you press the button again, and then you just glide like really slowly uh, to the next platform because it's kind of like a, a puzzle platformer. Is uh, Daedalus a controller person. game, Mike? Is it a gamepad requirement? No, no, no. So you just use okay. the uh, the Go remote, um, the Go controller. Yeah, you just press it once to jump, and then another get another time <laughs> to glide, and then that's basically the mechanic of the game. And it's very simple, um, very sort of minimalistic in terms of its art style, uh, but it's very sort of like I just had a really good time. Like I felt really relaxed playing it. It was almost like a Zen-like experience. I would kind of describe it that way. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I played it a lot, obviously, during my uh, monster play session. Um, <laughs> I, I, the, the best the best way to play it, I think, is if you're sitting down in a swivel chair, you can just rotate yeah. 360 then and then face the way you want to jump and then just do it and then glide. But when you're gliding, it just feels so nice. It's a neat. puzzle game, is it, Mike? I, I wasn't really sure. It's It's kind of like a puzzle game in that you've got to work out where to go like and what buttons to 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 get to and how to get to them is like a little bit tricky especially near the end um so it's not really a puzzler as such but there's like puzzle platformer yeah exactly yeah, yeah more like a that. windlands type thing almost exactly exactly like windlands but you no, kind of not really like there's not really combat involved in in this no one. combat no combat you don't die you know if you fall then you just reset at the beginning of the level again so it's very chilled out in that sense uh but again it's one of those go titles that you know was has been out on the gear for a while, but maybe not really. No one's really had a chance to pick it up or, ch- or check it out. But now that if you've got a gear a uh, go, then I would definitely recommend you go and check Daedalus out. It's a really good one. Um, so yeah, so that is say, uh, Mike. Just before we move away from that, because I don't think we talked exactly about what the release. So the the we talked about the free locomotion movement, but just to describe how it works is. Um, So you've got, so Red Matter or whatever, using the touch control, the the free locomotion is triggered with the grip. So you hold Mm. the grip and you will, it's very much, I'll call it like Skyrim PSVR. So in Skyrim, the way they get around not having enough buttons is you hold down one button, you point with your hand in the direction you want to walk, and it goes in that direction. And it's kind of like, it's on or off, basically. And it's the same thing here. So you're basically gripping to go forward at a set speed, and then you can mm-hmm. move like you can move your hand like a fish, and you'll you'll move like a fish as you're moving forward. That's their free locomotion patch, and I thought it was yeah. okay. But like you, Mike, you know the other method was better. I'd say. Yeah, I think so. I think it just appeases those people out there, the haters. You know, um, it's a smart is, move. It's a smart move. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I think that's it's always their... good. It's always good to have options at the end of the day. You know, so. that's it. Um, but yeah, we haven't really got many sort of big stories this week, but we've got lots of uh, little bite-sized morsels for you guys and girls to chew on. So uh, let's move <laughs> on to uh, Sensor Bounds because this is a, a an unusual little application. It's available for free on Oculus Rift right now. You can pick it up on the Oculus Store. And essentially, all it's there to do is help you configure your sensor uh, sort of layout. You know, if you've got two or three sensors, then you can use this to see your tracking area, but in real time as you're in VR. And it, it actually works way better than the Oculus one huh. uh, because you can perfectly see what your sensor's tracking area is. And then you can make adjustments if there's like a, a clear sort of dead spot in your tracking uh, area. And then you can sort of ju- adjust it and run it again. And then you can just sort of get the best sort of possible calibration for your sensors using this application. So uh, if you're uh, having problems with these sensors, uh, then definitely check out SensorBound. Like I said, it's free and it's probably going to be a useful tool for, for people out there with an Oculus Rift. Sounds like Rowdy would really benefit from that because if you've only got two sensors, you know, trying to get that, that sweet yeah. spot. And also, one, some people have commented online, I've, I was never able to do it, but if you've got two sensors, you should be able to get seamless tracking if you have them almost polar yeah. opposite from, from one yeah. another. But I never was able to achieve that. No, I suppose, the, Rowdy, is yours desk facing? You didn't get enough information back then, and now with this, no. this 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 tool, you would be able to get a much better like look at how you can really. Yeah, that's true. Like, definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that is a sensor sensor bound on the Oculus Store. Um, also this week, another handy tool launched, and that is on Steam VR. Uh, Valve pushed an update to the Steam VR beta, adding a new feature called Steam VR Input. Mm-hmm. Now, what this update allows you to do is configure the button mapping for your VR controllers, because we've got three big platforms now on Steam VR. We've got Oculus Rift, we've got HTC Vive, and Windows Mixed Reality. All have their own proprietary controllers, and sometimes when a game is designed for like the Vive, for example, like Doom VFR or uh, what LA Noir, you know. The buttons can be a bit sort of hit and miss as they're configured to like the uh, the, the touch controllers or maybe the Windows Mixed Reality uh, oh, no. controllers as well. <laughs> so with this application, you can actually uh, configure it, completely customize it to your own preference. Uh, it can be used by people at home. It can be used by developers to add sort of alternative control systems to their games quickly and easily as well. Um, but the great thing about this is, and not only just the fact that we can remap all our buttons, but like for people that have disabilities that maybe don't have two hands, for example, they could map some of the buttons from the left controller to the right controller, and then they can actually start getting involved in some of these VR titles as well. So I think that's a really great uh, you know, update from Valve, and uh, I think it's 
going to be great for people that uh, maybe have limited movement in some limbs or, you know, they've got disabilities. They're going to be able to play these games as well because you can map a lot of these buttons also to a controller. And I know there's a lot of like specially designed disability sort of controllers out there that people can use as well. So I presume you're of... in intentionally segueing into the Microsoft news, Mike, are you? By any chance, it wasn't that? actually, yeah, but it's worth worth mentioning yeah. because Microsoft have brought out their own controller, which they worked in conjunction with a company to produce, and it is just solely designed to be configured for people with uh, limited movement, limit, like disabilities, that kind of thing. Uh, and this that controller would perfectly work with this setup. And now you can sort of configure it and customize it. Nice. And maybe that's why Steam VR maybe did this. I, I don't really know, yeah. but. Um, yeah, I was super impressed great. by that. I think, I mean, special effect is a real is a real pusher here in the UK, and they announced the partnership with um, uh, with Microsoft mm -hmm. and their new accessibility controller. I when I first saw it, it looks like a, kind of like a large NES controller, like in the original Nintendo. It's quite square <laughs> with rounded edges. But when they exposed <laughs> yeah. the point, like for, my background is electrical electronic engineering, and so this is just like an input output box to an extent. Every single button mapping is a different piece. Yeah. So if you've got something that's on, uh, it's already on a jack, and you can just plug it right in. Your existing, even boutique controllers that you might have purchased from, like, you know, makeshift companies will work with this setup. It's really thoughtful of them. And the fact that they worked on this for three years and came out with it and are backing this, I can't remember the last time I've seen accessibility driven so hard by a company. It's, it's great. Yeah, it, it really is fantastic. I love that they're sort of pushing forward on this. Uh, if you want to try out the, uh, the the new update, the Steam VR input um, sort of beta, all you need to do is make sure that you're on the beta branch in Steam VR. So just go into Steam, uh, select the drop-down menu to select the beta, and then let the update roll. And then you just go into the menu in VR, and then you can <laughs> configure the, the control. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. So moving on from that to Beat Saber sales, because we've got some uh, huge congratulations to the God. Beat Saber team. They've sold over 50,000 copies of the game across Insane. Steam and Oculus in the first week of sales. Uh, and this would sort of equate to roughly around mil uh, $1 million in revenue. So they have to obviously split that with Oculus and Steam for the platforms. Um, but there will be a good chunk of money for them. Uh, but this was reported directly from their Twitter page about five days ago now. So if you can imagine now, the number's probably more looking towards the 100,000 copies sold right now, Mark, I would I would say. I, I remember um, something that Nathie mentioned. Do you remember when, Nathie, do you remember the first week when I think it was Fallout launched? And I think we were saying it was something either between twelve or 20,000 copies that it had sold. So like the big titles yeah. don't sell that hot, you know? And so yeah. this is this is huge. Huge, it's huge, like a huge milestone. Yeah, but that, 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 like if you, if you, if we talk, if we go back to like the, the um, launch Bethesda that did with like Fallout and Skyrim, um, it was very popular within the VR community. This game was popular within the VR community and outside of the VR community, and that's why it sold more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it has a, a much bigger range. Let's say if someone sees Beat Saber who doesn't own a VR headset, but then tells someone who does own a VR headset to buy it and wants to try it too, then yeah. it, it gets I've, much bigger. Yeah. I've seen so many comments on, on videos of Beat Saber of mine of people that said like, oh, I'm going to buy a VR, set, v, VR headset just for this game. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm convinced that a lot of people actually bought a VR headset just to play this. I really yeah. think so. That's but I also think seller. that the numbers we see here is actually like maybe triggering like like a big chunk of the VR community who really buys it, where they are all on board suddenly, you know? Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen that much. That's like these sales can happen if you really have a good marketing strategy or a really nice game, you yeah. know? So this is one of those moments where you can see that there is a big market for VR already, but you just need to find a way to make I it happen. The big thing with Beat Saber was that they actually had zero marketing budget. Yeah, they actually well, had the no part. marketing at all. <laughs> and it, it, it was their relationship with Liv, who are the mixed reality studio that make the uh, software for mixed reality capture. That partnership together made it viral. Yeah. And then they sort of had this marketing Come campaign on. they never had to pay for. And then right. it's, it was gold from there. And the it's game's impressive. great as well. That helps, obviously, of course. Yeah. It, it's um, very impressive. And, and this yes. will also like uh, give more opportunities to like other devs to see like the results right now they're like okay so it can actually happen so if mm. you make a very good game let's say if you got a single player game selling this well yeah. uh, with like a storyline etc then you know that's going yeah. to really uh hit hard 
within yeah. the whole like VR market because people are like, wow, this is so cool. Like this is just a small part where you can be a Jedi, but next up you can be something else. So this is one mm -hmm. of those moments where there are so many people suddenly more interested in the whole VR concept. Well, yeah. when they see other games, they don't feel that triggered to really get a VR headset or get spend more time like researching it. You know what I mean? So. I think as well, like with the mixed reality capture, you could watch that video and understand straight yeah. from watching that video that that, that person is in that world and they're enjoying it because of the way that it's filmed. Whereas if you just have a first person mm -hmm. view, it's very difficult to put mm -hmm. in a VR headset. Yeah. And, and as a creator, right? I mean, as for each of us, one of the nice things about a game like Beat Saber is it's actually, it's physical. This isn't mm. like some slob sitting with his potato crisps yeah. on the couch, right? Like drinking a beer uh -huh. and just like keying yeah. into his, his, his Xbox controller. <laughs> I mean, this is a really sweat. physical you're thing. So it goes back to something that I know a while ago Rowdy mentioned. You know, you're going to have VR fellas going out and be like, someone's like really buff up top and they're like, geez, he must be into VR. VR CrossFit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it happen. Let's trademark that right now. <laughs> but I think, that, yeah. I think that, you know, exercise is a real seller. Like, I mean, this went yeah, viral, but also... I mean, Mike, you said something about, about your wife. My wife had the same thing where she's like, can we set a date and do more? Like she's asking yeah. me to do more. And my, my wife and I are both huge gamers. It's not that. Yeah. This is just, they really hit fun and that polish. Yeah. And the other thing that we mentioned last week, just in case people aren't aware, they've now opened up to custom songs. So you yeah. you can actually play. I don't know, are they on the Steam? I haven't done it yet. Are they on, plugged into the Steam Workshop or how do you play yeah. a custom song at the moment? So there's there's tons of different guides out there to uh, play custom tracks. Um, one is that you have to go to a website. They've got all the tracks there. They've already sort of compiled the the sort of track layout and the song. You basically download them both, and then you can sort of inject that yeah. into the Beat Saber game yeah. library uh, using a tool. So if you want to do it, then there is ways and yeah. there's guides out there you can follow. Is it check because it out. of copyright reasons that they maybe they don't, don't promote want to have it. it on Steam? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And exactly. talking on that point, actually, uh, because exercise for VR, it is, a, it is a huge thing. It's convincing a lot of people to go in there. I don't know if you yeah. guys remember that episode of Dragon's Den with, uh, with Jan Hutkeluk from Virtuix when he went on there. He actually portrayed it as a, as, as a gaming device, but a lot of the, of the dragons that were uh, sitting there, they were very interested in using it as a, as a, as a you know, fitness nice. device. Uh, mm. Like if, if they were saying immediately, if we can put this, for example, in a fitness center, you know, have people practice on that while, while playing, like or walking in a, in a certain environment, that'd be a huge selling point. Of course, when they heard the price, they were a lot less interested uh, <laughs> because it was freaking expensive. But uh, yeah, I think exercise is a huge selling point for virtual reality. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So congrats to the Beat Saber devs. Uh, great work and uh, look forward to seeing what happens next because they, although they keep they keep saying they can't talk about it, which probably means that it is happening, <laughs> which means that a PSVR version is probably likely to be coming soon. Every time I'm anyone asks Rock any go. questions. Oh, I'm yeah. hoping for Oculus Go. I, I talked to, I talked be, to, uh... to, to Yen about it in, in uh, our sort of interview. <laughs> Keep doing that, Nathan, and, please. Um, you don't need more. Because <laughs> what I said is, is possible is that, say you have a blue lightsaber, you could just push a button to then change it to a red lightsaber. So you could just push the button in between changing the lightsaber colors. Yeah. So yeah. it could work. But I think the focus right now for them is of to course. keep updating the game, make sure it's super stable, add more tracks, bring PSVR out, and then they'll focus on uh, something else. But it's funny because when I mentioned um, uh, Go, he wasn't, he hadn't even tried the Oculus Go yet, uh, Yan. So, but he, when I said about Santa Cruz, I said, obviously that's going to be a six DOF headset and a six DOF controller setup. He was like, well, of course we want to be on every six DOF controller setup system. So there you have it uh, sort of inside that it's likely coming to Santa Cruz when that comes out. One bugger though with is, this if, game. If they release it on the Oculus Go, yeah. I don't think there will be a single person who doesn't have an Oculus Go that won't buy it. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> of course, this is, you know, it's huge. Yeah. No, it's really it's, it's going to be silly playing it with a controller then. I, I don't think they're going to do that, but yeah, who knows? Who knows? It's yeah, possible, but I, like the one thing I was going to ask you guys, what was your reaction in Beat Saber when you first saw the cube with the dot? So you could just oh. slash it any way you want, but I no, get people who want no. to stab it. Stab of course. It. That was my first reaction. Of course, stabbing it. Of course, because you're a rowdy guy. That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> my, wife, my wife was going crazy stabbing it. I'm like, no, honey, I think you just slash it from any direction. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. was stabbing it like, why is this not working? Like, <laughs> like, sweat dripping from my face. Tutorial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
noob. Uh, okay, so moving on to uh, the final part of uh, sort of our quick news this week, and that is Oculus events have been available on Gear VR and now obviously the Oculus Go, but now they're thankfully coming to the Oculus Rift. Good. Now this is an easy way to see upcoming community events such as develop uh, from developers such as like Alt Space Hangouts, uh, Poker VR tournaments, uh, mm-hmm. live streams, movie nights, uh, and you can see how many people are going to the event, like who's attending, and then you can sort of say, yeah, I'm going to attend this event, and then before the event, you get notified that it's going to happen to remind you, and then you can sort of join in with the fun as well. So mm-hmm. it's cool that they're bringing these uh, features over to Oculus Rift. It kind of seems weird this place, like when they developed them for Oculus uh, Go and the Gear VR. Um, but for me, the big thing that I want to see come to the Oculus Rift from the Go is Oculus Rooms, because I think Oculus Rooms just works so well, right? And it's such a cool place to hang out with your buddies. Yeah. Everything works so seamlessly. Why that isn't on the Rift with cross com- pl- cross platform with the Go? I, 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 still, I still wonder why Oculus Home on PC still doesn't have a decent friend system. Like it's it's just it hasn't mm. really improved at all. And if you then play Oculus Rooms, my days, that's that's awesome. I, love I think it. it's yeah. I think it's the way you can invite people over and things like that. It it's just like you can stay in one place and just hop over to the next thing without going to mm. your PC or do something funny by by clicking on your keyboard or anything. Like you can just go from one place to another without getting disrupted by anything else, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. they, it's funny, though, know, they use the friend system of Oculus Home and they just transfer it to your Oculus Go account and then you just see the potential of it. But yeah. it's, it's just it's maybe slow steps here on, on PC, <laughs> but they could have already made like an online feature where you could join with friends and things like that. Yeah. So I don't really know what they are waiting for. But now, since Oculus Rooms is there, just just bring it bring it bring it to pc and then change the characters as well of the, the avatars we have right now in my opinion they don't make any sense i don't feel the personal level of them they all wear glasses i don't see the reason of that then use the facebook spaces uh, avatars you know why they are the room's best combination ever because uh, it's to avoid like that uncanny valley because mm-hmm. as soon as you see eyes and they're not moving you immediately know, like, ah, uh, it's not, it's not mm, real. Yeah, but that's it's the not thing. Real. You can develop that. Like, if I play Rec Room, I always feel like there's much more interaction there, it's even if it's kind of random. But it's a different art style. Yeah, but if if you played Facebook Spaces lately, like the way they play with eyes now is yeah. a lot better, and it feels way more personal. Yeah. So I, I think yeah, they yeah. can do more with that. But yeah. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, it would be very interesting, but it, it does see, sort of seem apparent that they've been investing a lot of time behind mm-hmm. the scenes on the mobile oh, yeah. stuff, and you know, which hasn't been apparent to us Rift users. Um, but now that we've got it on this platform, we're like, it should be on every platform, right? Yeah. But like you say, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure it's coming. I'm sure it's coming. It was promised, okay. wasn't it, Mike? I think it was uh, actually it was promised, promised in the. I think I think Zuck when he was on stage at OC4 promised that uh, there was going to be multiplayer in. <laughs> In home, what Nathy was yeah. actually asking for there. So I think it's it's probably a release coming in the next number of months. Well, I think we've been talking year. about multiplayer stuff for 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 a lot longer now. Have, but it's yeah. just that uh, I, I don't really see much happening. You know, like you can add a friend on Oculus uh, Home right now. You can well, you can't really message them as far as I mean. you can invite them. But how many times do you really invite someone in mm-hmm. Oculus Home? It rarely happens. And now with the Go, it's so easy. You yeah. know, you just get her first, then you jump into the game. Perfect. Yeah. That's yeah. how it works. And it just That's works flawlessly. Works. Yeah, it does. It, it works does. really well. Yeah. So let's move on to our first main topic, which is uh, Boss Key Studio. Now, for those of you that don't know the history of Boss Key Studios, it was founded by an awesome dude called Cliff Bozinski. Uh, he was heavily involved in the development of the original Gears of War, which was on Xbox. And then he became like a, like a rock star celebrity in like the game development world. He was really, really cool. He was working for Epic Games. And then he left Epic Games and founded his own game development studio called Boss Key. This was about sort of four years ago. Uh, now, Bosky made a game called Lawbreakers, which was like a, a pancake game, but it was like an anti-gravity first-person shooter. But the problem was, like at the same sort of time, it had to contend with competition like Overwatch, and uh, the game just didn't do very well and didn't sell very well. So the studio sort of took a new direction and focused on a new game, which was called Radical Heights. And that was kind of like their take <laughs> on the uh, Battle Royale genre. And then, lo and behold, <laughs> 
PUBG and Epic Games come out with the double punch of PUBG and Fortnite, and then Radical Heights just had nowhere to go. Well, I mean, so, uh, correction, like Radical Heights came after oh, Fortnite sure. and PUBG, so exactly. it's kind of like, hey, uh, we are going to bring something that is not relevant to anyone because everyone is just playing the same game. Exactly, but, uh, like yeah. no one can compete with bias <laughs> right now. I mean, he tried at least. So, yeah. I mean, that's... You, you can't even move five <laughs> clicks on YouTube without seeing a Fortnite video right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, so anyway, the, the studio recently, unfortunately, uh, sort of came to a halt and Cliff said, you know, the studio's unfortunately closing, which is sad news indeed. It's never good to see a game development studio close. Yeah. Um, but as he was sort of closing, he sort of said, you know, these were kind of some of the uh, sneak peek stuff that we were working on behind the scenes. And two of the games were actually VR titles. So unfortunately, we're never probably going to get to... Shame. Yeah, we're never probably going to get to see these or play these VR titles, but these are the sort of games that they were developing. So the mm. first up was um, a game called Donuts, where you play as uh, various little cute animals and you're in these inflatable uh, sort of tubes racing down rivers and streams against each other. Okay. And um, <laughs> Cliff kind of described the game as like a Mario Kart on water in VR with animals, you know. So uh, this sounded kind of fun, it's sort of kind of casual, but it could have been a fun one anyway. But the second game that he was talking about sounded way more interesting, and this was the one that really got me triggered. So the, ga the game sort of code name in development was either Rover or Dog Walkers. They couldn't kind of decide which name to sort of settle on, but they sort of call it Dog Walkers because Dog was an acronym for destructive ordinance on the ground. And if you can imagine these big hulking oh, yeah. beast mech machines, a bit like, uh, I don't know if you ever played with the, the Zoids uh, sort of uh, toys as a kid, but they were basically big like mechs. Um, and if the kind of picture that he showed on his Twitter sort of portrayed these mechs hulking over a huge city. And the idea for the game was that five people would team up multiplayer to control this mech, uh, a bit like mm -hmm. uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew, but then go up against five other mech teams to battle it out in some sort of big brawl in a huge city. Damn it. So it's, it's five players in one <laughs> mech versus five players Seems in five other mechs. Yeah, uh, that Nathan's is the game the that we need it. I know, I know. And Sounds this is the thing, so like, good. It, it sounded so freaking cool. And um, he said that he was really heavily inspired by uh, the movie uh, Fury, which is like obviously a tank, a World War II tank movie, and uh, the Zoids, like I mentioned before. Um, but yeah, he, I kind of had this vision in my mind of like, you know, someone's like a captain, someone's a gunner, someone's like maintenance, and you're controlling this big hulking <laughs> mech together as a team and then so someone is like sweeping the entire time like yeah. sweeping. Sweeping. Just, uh, sure i think that would be the best yeah, idea for you yeah, yeah i don't think you team? want to do more <laughs> yeah that's no, not the, safe who's the teammate and, and it's, it's like that idea of like working together in 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 like a yeah. mac or something else reminds me of that that game where you work uh in like a blimp or something where you also need mm. to kind of like uh, keep your blimp into the air and field no, 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 it's not, uh, I mean, Battlefield also has blimps, but uh, <laughs> it was like like a different one. But I like that idea of like having teamwork and then have like a ship or, you know, a pirate yeah. ship or something like Sea of Thieves, something where you really need to work together to keep something floating or driving or walking or flying. It, it, does, it does raise a question with me, like if you have five players per mech and you have how much, six mechs then? Uh, five oh, mechs in total. Five mechs, so that's 25 players per map. Ooh. It's yeah. going to be hard to populate that in a VR game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And, and, and this is what I was going to say. Like, I don't think multiplayer games like this are, you know, ready yet. You know, like, they, they yeah. shouldn't be ready yet because they're just going to die, I think, a second they release because there isn't the player base. Yeah. But a game like this in the future, I certainly like the concept yeah. of it. And, uh, you know, the idea of working together as a team to control this yeah. huge beat. And, and battle someone else that's controlling a huge beast. Oh, I, lo awesome. I love that idea. I mean, Rowdy and I played Iron Wolf. Wasn't mm. a oh, multiplayer, yeah. but we like I said to Rowdy, like, oh, I see an enemy. Let's let's go let's go uh, above uh, like like the water, you know, and see where they are. And then we were just standing on top of it, using like a, a gun, shooting on planes. We did three like, mines. I, 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 yeah, okay, we also did that, and we <laughs> we, we, we drove into like a, a ship because we thought it was funny. But <laughs> in the end, like I did feel the teamwork. I felt the intensity of like mm. sitting in that that U boat together with Rowdy. Hearing all kinds of noises, hearing mines, seeing mines, 
things mm-hmm. like that. So having that teamwork going on where yeah. you're really responsible for each other is yeah. still one of the best concepts for a VR multiplayer game. It es- is. Especially if like you could communicate with the other mechs. Like say you got into close range and you could talk to the other team and you'd be like, like, shall we form an alliance and then g- get gang up on the other mechs or shall we just fight it out and duke yeah. it out? That would be a really interesting concept yeah. as well. Yeah. So like the captain has to sort of like you know, negotiate a deal almost with the other players. That would be that'd be pretty sick. Yeah. So the so the blimp game I was talking about uh, was called uh, Guns of Icarus. Oh, it okay. was the steampunk VR yeah. game, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it wasn't. A, wasn't a VR game. Just oh, it a wasn't PC, VR. Yeah, pancake, uh, pancake game, pancake. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, those were the uh, the two <laughs> titles from Foskey that. Unfortunately, we'll never see because yeah. the studio. We, were, like, we don't even know how much. Like, how much did they even finish of that? Because I know developers that always have the best ideas ever, and they just make <laughs> yeah. part of everything they think of. But yeah. then they never made something. So I mean. Yeah, of course. Like all, all they had to show was concept art and, yeah, and, okay. and a game premise. Okay. Um, so I don't think they even started any sort of real work on it. But I thought it was a pretty solid idea, and I do like the yeah. idea of it. And maybe if there's a bigger VR base in the future, that it would be a cool game. To like come start out. start your first uh, like game design lessons now. Oh mate, I'll be I'll be going the way of Bosky within a couple of weeks. I reckon. I, 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 I don't think I'll be very good at it. The other uh, thing I was going to say, Mike, is the uh, the first one you mentioned sounded a lot to me like a what was the N64 game I played? I think it was called Diddy Kong Racing, where you were in little <laughs> you were in little uh, tubs like this, but it was it was the equivalent. It was on the water. But you were going yeah. along, and they had uh, airplanes, and they had the, the water vehicle, which was basically a little turbine yeah. behind a little inflatable. Yeah. And it was actually loads of fun. So would that do well in VR? Do you want sim sickness and on the ocean waving? <laughs> I mean, you know, I'd do it, but I don't know if yeah. others would. You know, so. who, who knows? I don't know if it was like a first-person or a third-person game, or oh, wow. if you overlook the map, maybe like a Blaze Rush kind of style. Do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they they kind of uh, were inspired by the game Tubing, T double O B I N. I've never heard of a game before, but yeah. apparently it's a sort of similar premise. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, that won't won't ever come to be. I don't think nowadays. No. Um, so yeah, moving on to uh, some other news, and that is uh, the VR League season two is about to start. So uh, last I... year. Uh, Oculus teamed up with ESL, who are the Electronic Sports League, to bring us the VR Challenger League. Mm. Now, it was uh, the first sort of VR esports league where the best players of the world could sort of come together and face off in a competitive multiplayer. Uh, uh, and they were sort of using games such as like The Unspoken and Echo Arena. And uh, there was a prize up for grabs of like 200,000 US dollars. And uh, I remember when we went to Oculus uh, Connect, I don't know if you remember this, Sim, but they were showing off a lot of the Echo Arena uh, matches there. And they had this awesome setup there where they had the Echo Arena sort of players on stage. um, And then you could see their views, uh, first person views behind them on like a big monitor each. And uh, it was all like lit up with like blue and orange. And it looked really sort of visually uh, sort of uh, appealing. It was yeah. Um, it was clear that they were pushing money at it to say like you know you can tell that they were trying to drive this thing. The people were yeah. quite. I mean, they put all the food in the event in front of the stage. <laughs> like you want a burger? <laughs> go over there. Go go look right. at the cool stage that we got the guys together. So it wasn't like mm-hmm. I'd say energy level was like they they had the setup. They actually had the audience, but I think the audience was there mostly because of the food. Right. But I think I could see that becoming a thing in three years or five years. I don't yeah. know that we're there yet in esports, but it'll come. It'll come, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure they'll be pushing it again at the next uh, Connect yeah. uh, meetup. But this year, um, Oculus and ESL are back together and they're bringing season two of the VR League. Uh, this time, you can compete in uh, competitive games such as The Unspoken, uh, Sprint Vector, Onward, mm. Echo Arena, and also the brand new Echo Combat. So that's going to be interesting as well. Um, and the grand prize is two hundred and twenty thousand US dollars for a team if you win. Um, hey, we, unspo- have we have a team, guys. A team. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch. I'll be honest. Like when you said Sprint Vector, that's out of the three, the one I want to watch. I want to see the human competitors in Sprint Vector, world class people, fucking nailing it yeah. on stage. Like yeah. that would be awesome to see, actually. Yeah, it would actually. It would. You're right. Um, because you're gonna to have to go hell for leather on that one, and you're gonna be sweating buckets, like seriously. 
So it's yeah, be so funny to watch though. It's gonna yeah. be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and if they do it like they did last time, you know, make it this big sort of event and do a nice stage and the way you can see it and everything yeah. else, that'd be really really cool. Um, so the unspoken competition actually started yesterday. Um, the 18th of May. The Echo Arena competition starts tomorrow, the 20th of May, and then Sprint Vector starts on the 4th of June. So if you want to sort of follow the league and watch these sort of tournaments mm. live, or if you want to take part in the league, you can do that as well. You just head over to uh, vr.eslgaming.com mm. or follow the VR League on Facebook or on Twitter, and you can get involved that way. Cool. <laughs> But yeah, also, I think we would, uh, we would be the worst team because you guys would be like dragging my my <laughs> sorry ass around. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. uh, like a tip from Max, who played some uh, Sprint Factor, he says like you need a lot of space. Yeah, that's true. And uh, he destroyed three lamps, so he's an expert. Well, I'll good. tell you what yeah. I want to see I'm, next I'm year. I'm looking forward to see him play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. That's a good idea. I, I, next year, I want to see. I want to see. Uh, miscellaneous songs some mystery songs from beat saber and people playing that competitively that's what i want to see it's so, funny so because be uh, really it, it's funny because when i spoke to yan about uh, beat saber sorry to go back to beat saber again but it's worth mentioning that you said it uh, they were talking about a uh, multiplayer where you can see the other player and the tracks almost like cross over so the tracks spawn either way and then there was ways that you could mess up someone else's track like, like tetris uh, yeah, exactly. Like I said in the beginning, like uh, yeah. when this game t came out, they need to make like a Tetris version of this. Yeah. It'd be huge. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're working so on it. Funny as they're, well. They're working on it. Or being able to make your own shapes and then just let your imagination go wild. <laughs> oh my god! Five no. like, you know, you know that part <laughs> where there's like a circle. You know, you can change that to something else, and then you can stick it anyway. You know, like it's, it's up to you. <laughs> okay so let's move on to uh the Oops. pimax 8k so we got some updates this week about the pimax 8k uh for those that don't know and have been living under a rock the pimax 8k was a kickstarter campaign a bit like the original oculus rift was uh lots of people backed it but it has this kind of real huge field of view a lot of people are very interested in it and it comprises of two 4k uh displays in the headset uh so that's why they call it the 8k uh, but essentially this week they gave some updates and what they said was the M1 units, uh, which are the, these kind of like prototype units for testing, are going to be shipped to closed betas uh, testers this month. Mm. And there'll be around 10 of those going out to people to test the headset and give them critical feedback just in case anything needs to be changed prior to the final sort of uh, consumer product. And um, they also said that the actual headsets themselves, they're looking to ship to backers uh, if the M1 testing goes well in June. So uh, June will be the date that you get your headset if you backed it. And this is for 5K backers and 8K backers. Um, so they're going to be shipping around the same sort of time. Uh, they said that the refresh rate for the 8K is stable at 80 hertz right now. So to put that into perspective, the Rift and the Vive both run natively at 90 hertz. And the Oculus Go runs natively at 60 hertz, mm. but boosts up to 72 hertz. So uh, there's a bit of a sort of a mix there in terms of refresh rates. But, you know, if it works, it works. It'll be interesting to see uh, what it's like. Uh, but the team are obviously trying to improve it. So worst case scenario, it will be 80. But interestingly, the 5K headset will ship at 90 hertz. So it's just that they can't reach that refresh rate using the 8K headset right now. That's fair. A quick clarification, yeah. Mike. Was that June 2019? <laughs> no, that is June 2018. So in like like a month's time, hopefully you will see a Pimax sitting here on my desk because I don't know if you, I mentioned it before, but I actually backed the Pimax 8K. Oh, yeah. So hopefully I'll have one here. So to what show was you guys. like the, what was like their first like like uh, uh, focus on like in terms of like shipping it? Was there any? Did it they ever be... like tell people when they were going to get one? Yeah, it was going to be February this year. February. So yeah. yeah. That was okay. the original uh, ship month. The, w the way I understood it, though, it's only the the headset, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Any of the you're base stations? Yeah. You're you're 100. percent The controllers yeah. also not. Yeah. So you will still need to go and get those separately. Yeah. Which I don't. So I'm just gonna sit here with a Pimax on my face and not use <laughs> it. <laughs> but that yeah, you're be absolutely expensive, right. Expensive though, right? I mean, you must be able to pick up like some V1 base stations off eBay. For somebody who cracked their vibe or whatever. Yeah, That's yeah what for, I for something that I've already paid $800 for. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I'll probably end up trying to borrow but some. You, but... You're still getting them then 
later on eventually eventually yeah yeah Yeah, so that's it like the controllers uh which are these like prototype ones uh they're going to be apparently ready in june july and they will be shipping in quarter four so really sort of later on in the year same with the lighthouses as well they're aiming for october shipment for the lighthouses it's a very Uh, rough estimation though with their with the it is it is it is and they've already slipped a few times already so you know it's likely it's going to happen again um (laughs) <laughs> They've also been working with um, sort of Pi tracking, uh, which is sort of like their prototype, some sort of uh, new tracking module that they've got. Sorry, I don't know whether that's eye tracking Pi or- tracking. Pie tracking. Pie, pie, pie tracking. tracking. So I, I I wasn't quite sure where this is like um uh like tracking pucks or it's eye tracking. I wasn't it wasn't clear on the update, so I don't actually know what that means, unfortunately. Uh, but they're looking to publicly demo that soon as well. It so I'm hungry, um, Mike. It means I'm I'm hungry now. They, they yeah exactly apple pie. <laughs> apple pies <laughs> apple pies around. Do we do we get an There's apple pie with pie. Pie. Uh, Mike? Because uh you know. Yeah. So the audio quality and the specs, they're sort of pop, but like they're all working on that as well, just to make it the best possible experience for consumers and when they actually finally ships. But the last point on their update was probably the most interesting one. And they said that the Pimax 8K supports Oculus games and we will make an Oculus gaming video with the M1 demonstrating it. So I was like, what the heck does that even mean? Like, it, it, does it mean that they've got some sort of like baked in version of Revive to yeah. work with the Pimax? Yeah. yeah. Or does it mean that the Pimax is going to work with like the Oculus sensors and the and the touch controllers? I don't think so. I think it's probably more like the first idea. Uh, but it's interesting that they even mention it. So it must be one thing that keeps on cropping up in terms of like the community is asking uh, for that's, it. That's 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 an interesting thing because as you may know, Revive has been made by someone who likes to stay anonymous as far as I know. Mm-hmm. But then we have Pimax just maybe going to bring out something like Revive. Is that even legit? Can you even do that? Is that well, this, this, this is the thing like- you're allowed to do. Uh, this is the uh, thing, like Revive had a bit of a battle in the beginning, right? So when Revive first came out, Oculus actually blocked it. They said that they didn't do it intentionally and it was uh, blocked accidentally. And then they quickly sort of removed it because there was a big sort of kickback from the community. Yeah, but that's like Revive made by a guy who makes software. But this is a company who makes a headset and then says like, what? hey, you know what? You can also play some Ox. But in the end, like it will sell more Oculus games, I guess. But but still, it's kind yeah. of strange. I mean, yeah. wasn't it? Wasn't I it like it, though. It's very cool, but... How is that even, how can you legit like do that? Yeah, like it's going to be really interesting to see how Oculus react to this. Like like you say, yeah, are they well, going to say, yeah. they gonna say well, no, we're not going to do this or, but, you know. But, they should be careful wasn't it, uh, sure Oculus could destroy Pimax if they wanted yeah. to. But, yeah, but wasn't it Parma Lucky who like uh, funded a large part to Revive? <laughs> yeah, he did. He did actually. No, he, like it was actually more recent than that. Like uh, when Palmer broke ties with Oculus, he actually pumped a lot of money into into Revive as a backer. Yeah, yeah he did do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, 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 the the word that like that that frustrates me the most about that is the word uh, uh, compatible. Like it it supports. Mm. Like wh- what does that mm. exactly mean? Like it supports yeah. it, but is it is? It, I mean, you have so much. Yeah, more yeah, degrees of of, uh, of 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 you. Like, yeah. what does that mean and support? Like, does that? So that, interestingly, that like, I'd love like to know like, you guys if you've actually tried this out. Like, have you tried the Vive Pro using Revive with any Oculus titles? I did. Yeah, and and, and I that, did one, one, one. And what, increased resolution and everything else. Mm, well, that's a good one. I I didn't really notice. A... Mm a strange or like an odd difference or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag yeah. for science. Yeah. But yeah, it's, of course. You've got uh, to, that, right? That's a, that's a good one. But yeah. I, I don't think I really noticed it. Um, mm. I did notice some more performance issues because like some of the games really need to pull uh, together with like uh, a revive. But yeah, you're well, going to be working with a higher resolution, right? I actually, and, 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 I actually, uh, Sorry. Recently removed Revive because it was actually affecting my uh, my resolution, the the frame rate of my headset. Oh really? Yeah. So it, when, did... when I, like the super, when I tried any super sampling, I always had to like turn it like any lower because of I I think there was some kind of conflict with another program on my computer mm. because as soon as I removed that, I could increase my super sampling yeah. to. Uh, mm. I think that higher. everything that works with Steam VR is is pretty sensitive. You know, it's the same with Vive part. I mean, that also yeah. causes some issues sometimes. So I, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it's interesting though, and I think it it's it's cool to see people like 
uh, announcing things like, hey, we make our headset compatible with but I mean, it's o Oculus is exclusive. You can't just just say that. I mean, and, it just and, sounds so odd. I don't know. I like the idea. It's so uh, badass, but it's just you're touching an exclusive brand, and then so like, hey, you know what? We're just gonna make something for it. You know? Yeah, and it kind of almost sparks of like they don't have their own content to push, right? So they're just gonna use someone else's content but instead. Is, yeah. They have their own SDK, right? That they want to push the developers to be, you know, making. Mm. full use of all the qualities of the Pimax. So developers, if they want to like, you know, take the full advantage of it, they, they are going to have to implement the, the Pimax SDK as well. Yeah. yeah. So then it's a strange decision, I think, to... Yeah. But that's to maybe because more then more they're more. like, maybe they, they don't see a lot of developers really creating content for it and they really want to kind of throw out some more ideas to kind of save the Pimax for the idea like, if there's not enough content from the developer side, then we can still say like, hey, you can play other games with it that mm. were not compatible in the first place. Yeah. Um, because like, that's the thing. If you are a developer, are you like, how many developers, that's something we don't know yet, but how many of the developers are seriously going to develop uh, uh, as like an extra for, for the Pimax, you know? Are they going to do that? Everyone knows that developers always focus on, mm. on maybe the mobile market, uh, on maybe the Oculus Go now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the Rift, the Vive, and then you have a PlayStation, you know, that is also always like like a big plus. But are they also going to add Pimax to that? We don't know. Mm. But we do know that uh, software, like like software, is always winning from hardware in the end. So if there is yeah, not enough, if there are not enough games out there, experiences, it's not gonna make it. Even that it has the best resolution ever. So that's yeah. something that I don't know how much they have been working on that already. But if they are only focusing on the hardware right now. Then they got a big problem because then at the moment it launches, there's nothing really there. So I hope they don't mainly focus on like, oh, let's just make everything compatible and then yeah, you can just play everything, right? The but only thing, the only the thing they need is a good porn app. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> I, you, you don't want to be up that close in 8K, dude. Seriously. <laughs> you, you need a little okay. bit of blur, though, trust me. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, um, okay. but yeah, like I, I, I think, Trust I think me. problem solved. I think, I think problem solved. I, th I think Nathie's right in that you know, like uh, you know, the content is king at the end of the day. But I think this is probably what they're hinting at is that they're working to bridge the gap, so it can be used on other platforms. So maybe that they're working on something that it doesn't need a developer to integrate an SDK in or something like that. It will just work. That makes smart. That'd be smart. Yeah, that, that would be a smart way of doing it. But even if it uh, works, right? One of the things I would expect, and this is something I mentioned. Remember when Wipeout landed on PSVR, and I said mm. that you could, you know, you could look back far enough that you could see that the the ships flying overhead had like a hard yeah. cutoff, like it was a GIF, basically. You know, it was just a yeah. texture that was painted on the sky. So I'm expecting that if you've got extra FOV in certain games where untested, that that's going mm. to essentially be, you know, areas that the developer didn't even think about you were going to yeah. be looking. You know, and so yeah. some of that stuff will come to the forefront because they weren't expecting players to come across that. Yeah, it's absolutely. Right. Because as a developer, you're going to make every possible effort to make your gut, your game run as fast as possible, right? And if you're going to do that by cutting off the edges here and there, or making this bit invisible, or not, you know, because you're never going to see it on a yeah. 110 degrees uh, field of view headset. But it, it's and not even it's not even developers who control that, right? That's Nvidia and AMD. That's the that's the graphics card drivers and and, and hardware that actually controls what's being rendered in that frame. I mean, there was a very close partnership for the last few years between mm. Oculus and NVIDIA, for instance, um, in terms yeah. of partnering and making sure that you're getting efficiency for what your computer is actually generating mm. in terms of the, it, you know, it, it's going to be with Intel, right? I mean, Intel uh, helped Vertigo games out when they were uh, doing Arizona Sunshine. So yeah. yeah. True. It's going to be a very interesting few months indeed. Yeah. Because like, I'm if, so, if like, thing... I have so many questions. I just want yeah, to have some answers and I don't yeah, get exactly. them. And I've been and waiting I... for this thing for for like months now. And yeah. it's so like... Because if this thing comes out the gates and actually delivers on everything it's... it promised, then it's going to be like a game changer, right? I... So... Yeah, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, so I, I am excited for it. I know. It gives like... The, this, this company gives a lot of positive signals okay but it also gives a lot of strange ones and and maybe negative ones that uh, you know i just hope that people really get something for the money they the, the thing spend. is i think for i think for simulator games is going to be great because you're going to be your hands yeah. are going to be away from 
the the device on your hat you know you, you're not going to be moving that much around you know you look around a little bit but it's going to be fairly straightforward That's so right. even the refresh rate i don't think it will matter that much but if you're going to play like a shooter kind of game or like something where you're <laughs> doing this or AK Beat Saber. It's too bulky. The physical stuff. You're going to whack that thing. Beat Beat Saber Saber would destroy that device. Someone's going to do it. I promise you someone's (laughs) going to do it and knock the headset off their head and break it. That's Uh, going to happen. They really, like, I I think they, I, I don't know if they are focusing on this already, but they need to create a market uh for the pimax you know because developers will then make games for it experiences and they are also proud to promote it because that's also a thing you want to like like support the headset because you believe in it and then you will see it popping up on let's say steam and it has like that icon but that just doesn't happen out of nowhere we have seen that with osvr back then there were a few games that supported that headset but then it slowly disappeared again uh, into the background so i mean so, so let's move on then to uh, an- another new exciting <laughs> headset. Uh, so this is the Google Plastic. Um, now, the future is clear according to Google. They're constantly striving to make your experience more immersive because that's what we all want, right? More immersive experiences. So what they've done is they've previously brought the affordable VR to the masses with the Google Cardboard. And now they're looking to push the boat out even further and take the next big step with Google Plastic. So this is the new headset from Google. It's the next evolution, let's say. Uh, And they're sort of, they're trying to make everything you see and hear in this headset real, right? And they actually call this technology actual reality. (laughs) Uh, Now, the Google Plastic is uh, a fully immersive headset that features a really lightweight design. It's fully waterproof. Um, It's compatible with all the apps across all platforms and uh will be uh, will allow you to see in up to 2020 vision if your own eyesight will allow it um it also <laughs> comes with uh 360 audio built in as standard um so i really think that this is going to be <laughs> the, the next level in terms of uh, how headsets. much does it cost <laughs> Are so good. <laughs> how much is it like uh, is it like uh, is, it, is it a standalone device or uh <laughs> completely the standalone. Is gonna get it's a completely standalone wow completely standalone. the resolution is unparalleled in this thing the, the, you cannot beat the 8k uh pimax has has nothing on this thing <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the, this thing is obviously like a, a bit of a, a bit of a joke um <laughs> You know, I, I remember this one. Like, is this a is is, is this an old joke or something? Because I, it's so, like I've seen it for the first time. But yeah, so it's, 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 I don't know how long this has been around because I only saw that this right. a couple of weeks ago. But I thought it was really funny. Like, <laughs> That's it's a really, really funny, funny video because it was really professionally shot. And when I first started watching it, probably a bit like you guys and girls watching this or listening to me. I was like, this sounds amazing. Like, what are they working on? And then it just turns out to be this complete joke. <laughs> yeah, I was um, thinking, like, how are they going to integrate, like, the the the, the screen, like, through that glass? Yeah. Like, you know, and then I see the guy playing tennis, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> dude, come on. You can play soccer, Rowdy. Look, look at the yeah, soccer yeah, yeah. game player, man. This yeah. is yeah. Like... People are asking in the chat, is it BPA-free? <laughs> well, if you're putting it next to your eyes, it wants to be, that's for sure. And before you ask, Rowdy, the porn app in this one is great. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like you're almost there does it, does it, someone is also asking does it have a built-in audio like the go everything <laughs> yeah. is so realistic man like it's exactly it's audio you have never heard before it's almost like it's real you know yeah 360 <laughs> spatial audio is built into this thing. <laughs> and uh, free future upgrades so if you get your light your eye lasered like you know rowdy did <laughs> You know, those upgrades will go with the headset as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. There's actually a web link here to Google Cardboard Plastic. So I'm thinking they... Yeah. See, I, I might be wrong here, but I think this was an April Fool's Day joke in 2018, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. It could well have been. Yeah, it could well have been. I think it Whilst was. I was uh, cutting cables, they were making this awesome video. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I thought I'd mention something, soon. though, there, Mike, because I don't think we have it on the list. Um, do you have Samsung and their news? Because I was going to... Uh, no. I'll just mention it then quickly. Yeah, so sure. we, we did talk about the um, the Apple T288, which was the, the yeah. kind of early splash of of Apple's AR VR mix headset, which is due mm. out in 2020 and may never see the light of day. Uh, Samsung have now also said 
me too, and essentially said that an AR MR headset is under production from them. So clearly, we're at the races. The two big, you know, companies are now running, and it'd be I love competition. So let's see who gets yeah, there first, course. eh? But well, we know it's going to be Apple. So, well, you know, this, this is the thing. Like, I always welcome competition as well, and you know, and I know last episode we were kind of going a little bit hard on the Lenovo <laughs> Mirage Solo, and we we're kind of fanboying a little bit on the Go. But it's because like we've all just got the Go, and we're all very excited about it still. But yeah. I do welcome the fact that these other companies are dipping their toe in the oh. water. They are making yeah. hardware, yeah. and um, I think there's just a lot of lessons to be learned. You know, I'm mm. sure they can learn Working some progress. lessons. Exactly. And uh, ultimately, we'll get somewhere where there's going to be uh, an even playing field with all the different headsets. It's just a case of which manufacturer do you tend to sort of align with. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's an exciting time to be alive and be involved in this industry, because I think there's a lot of stuff going on right now behind the scenes. Uh, certainly, people are taking a lot more interest in VR and the VR industry in general. Yeah. And uh, it's only going to go uh, bigger and better from here, I think. So uh, I it's think very that, exciting. Time just in to terms do. of like, what would I would expect? I actually think that Samsung will beat Apple to the market with their AR VR headset. It'd probably be mm. better spec'd, but Apple will do something to make the form factor absolutely attractive, you know, yeah, and it'll just be something where, like that mock-up that we'd seen, which was super slimline, or was just basically yeah. taking your phone on a band and putting it on your face, they're going to do something yeah. that's probably going to beat the competition. But the thing that always concerns me with these with these developments is the level of secrecy that's required People oh, die incredible. over this level of secrecy. Like, I'm not even yeah. joking. I mean, it's not like, yeah. oh, you're fired, you know, if you let that kind of corporate secret out. They will hunt you. Like, that is scary level of corporate, you know, secrecy, so. It's funny, because I remember, like, years ago, there was, like, a, a prototype of the uh, iPhone 3GS that was uh, leaked. Or, oh. no, it was the iPhone 4, and it was in an iPhone 3GS-style yep. case. Yep. So it looked like a 3GS, but it was actually an iPhone 4, because it was the new Squarer sort of phone. Um, so they go to real sort of lengths to protect their secrets, and it's really interesting. But like you say, I think Samsung will probably come out first with something because they've already got established uh, in the VR space. You know, they've made the Odyssey, that. which is a great headset. They've made the Gear VR with collaboration <laughs> with Oculus, so they know what they're doing. But I think you're right in that Apple will probably come out with something that's really aesthetically pleasing and have that real sort of design uh, to it because they've got the best designers <laughs> in the world working for them. You know, they really have. Hey, hey, for our audio hey, listeners, hey. Rowdy is making a retching motion, and it appears yeah. he is about to lose his lunch. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Serious, seriously, oh, though, don't hate done on kissing any, the ass of Apple. <laughs> yeah, well, don't, don't hate on any uh, any mobile phones here, because like last week, I like I was trolling, of course, Rowdy with like the Samsung and iPhone thing. I I mean, uh, both phones are totally fine and brands, you know, but. Um, I was like trolling him on the podcast last week, and then I wanted to activate one of my game keys for the Go, and I couldn't do that on my on my Oculus uh, like oh, yeah, uh, Go app on my iPhone. <laughs> uh, but you could on the Android. So people, if you say something bad about a brand, instead of Garmin, <laughs> don't it, say it, it, really it, careful. It, how did you resolve that problem in the end? Uh, oh, I, I so I, I went to the website, and over awesome. there you can just uh, activate your keys as well. But I, I hope it will get fixed because your phone is like a nice little feature too use you know but good, good, yeah. tip, good tip but but in the end like when we joke about samsung and everything like we, we, we all yeah all I, brands I, are fine I, I, just like, I love this just a year ago as well so. <laughs> just joking around is the most fun thing ever especially calling each other fanboys <laughs> <laughs> well that's true that's true so uh let's wrap this one up then let's ask the, the chat if they've got any questions while i just go over the sort of times again so if you've got any questions in the chat now is your time to speak up and ask us any questions that you've got so just a reminder this is a, a weekly vr ar and mr talk show is live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel. You can tune into the show live now at the new times of 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK, 12 midday in Central US. Mm. If you missed the live stream, you can catch up with the re-upload on my own channel, Virtual Reality Oasis, or you can check out the audio version, which is available on Google Play Music and on iTunes. Now, if you leave a review on iTunes, that will really help us out because... Uh, no one knows how awesome our podcast is right now. So you should help <laughs> spread the word and let everyone know. Uh, that would really help us out. Uh, we would really appreciate it as well. Well, there is a question so, from earlier, Mike. So uh, there was an Emma Wiggins asking, who was, who's a desperate without a headset, asking if any of the channels are doing any headset giveaways. So if anyone's got anything planned... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I don't think any of us do actually at the moment. Like, uh, I don't think any of us planned. I know Nathan had, right? um, 
Nate's had some big ones in the past, right? You've given yeah. away a PS PSVR. Yeah, I don't know. I've given I, away I a PSVR for the 50k, but uh, oh, nice. Yeah, I yeah, I don't I don't give them away like every week or something. So just just find fifty thousand of your friends. You bring them over to all the channels. <laughs> yeah, you get yeah, them to yeah. sub to everybody, and yeah. boom, there you go. You got a chance one what, in a hundred thousand. I'll, I'll do you a deal. If you can get this to 50k in a couple of weeks, I'll send you an Oculus Go myself. <laughs> uh, so there we have it. There's Any the other other one uh, of uh, like kind lamp. Uh, if you if you what wait. So what is our best uh, horror VR experience we we played so far? Easy. From best VR experience Easy. of all time. Oh, horror, so horror, uh, horror one. Oh, horror experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it Scary. would be like Face Your Fears just recently. Oh, that plain one that I tried. Uh, nah. that was, I hate flying. So um, okay. being next to the window seat and then having a monster like hijack the plane and then crash it, that was pretty terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, definitely Resident Evil. Resident I think Evil. that's the best best horror experience. I, I, for me, it's uh, Edge of Nowhere because really? uh, it was like, yeah, for a third person game, that's that's pretty legit, like a scary thing. Yeah, to, I can to see it later it's, on. It's, it's, it's he's not, he's not asking what is the scariest. He's asking what is the best one. Yeah, the best I one. Well, well I mean, right. Resident yeah. Evil is like maybe an Edge of Nowhere on, on if you like third person platforms, it's pretty yeah. good. But I'm I'm fighting between two. Um, Mike knows Metal. my from other son's experience. Uh, yeah. just thankfully recorded and maybe jump across the room. <laughs> um, but actually earlier and something that I, I, I said on Mother's Day recently, the U.S. Mother's Day, uh, was was just Alien Isolation. Because Alien Isolation, mm. Ooh, uh, the yeah. AI behind the alien, the AI that drives the alien's behavior yeah. is bloody terrifying because it, yeah. it convinces you that, oh, mm. it's forgotten about you. And then it comes charging back. The audio yeah. is, is really intense. Yeah. You're maybe hiding in a locker it, and then you get to I have to confess, I didn't even dare to try that one. So <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the that's one that one day. scary. One day. But you didn't even you didn't even say Dreadhalls. Game on you. Dreadhalls, I've done. I mean, Dreadhalls uh, is good. Like I think I, I want to play it now on the go. I've got it downloaded, uh, so I am planning to do that. <laughs> on the go. Oh my. Yeah, but I I um uh, I've played I've played about two hundred hours of Dreadhalls. Like it, it's not a. <laughs> I'm not even so joking. Evil. You know, in single <laughs> sitting, in a single sitting, I did about six hours straight once. <laughs> So, okay. how many of those hours did you have like a mouthpiece in where you're dribbling <laughs> out? Like, that's a recent addition to the show, Mike. I don't normally have the mouthpiece. Right. Right. So, right. So, PD so says what... that Monstrum in VR is also super scary. Oh my Everyone's god. Also, uh, uh, paranormal uh, activity? Isn't that a VR experience? As uh, well? Yes. Yes. Yeah, but it was a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, thought, I thought I didn't like that one. Uh, Exorcist looks very good, actually. It's episodic, and I'd quite like to try that one out, but I haven't, haven't yeah. had time yet. You want to have like either. a. If you want to have like a scary experience in Fallout 4, I recommend you going to the Museum of Witchcraft. Have fun. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay, well, let's wrap this show up for this week. Uh, we've gone on for long enough, so I hope you guys and girls have enjoyed this episode. Uh, we've been talking about a lot of different subjects this week. No real sort of big news, nothing real juicy, but lots of sort of little tidbits for you to chew on. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, we will see you on next week's episode of the show. So until then, goodbye and have a good week. Bye. See you later. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye.